Welcome back guys. Uh, gonna make another how-to video. Um, this one's gonna be how to clean walleye and get the cheeks out. Um, it's kind of a necessity. You gotta get those cheeks out. I try not to waste any fish at all. So if I can take something out of it. I've eaten walleye eggs before actually too and they're not actually that bad if you fry them up and you know your favorite seasonings. The one thing I don't do is take out the walleye wings which a lot of people will give me you know crap for and that's just because I don't fry my food all the time so I don't always need those and I, I figure if I'm getting the cheeks at least I'm getting 90% of what I can use the walleye wings are that little 10% left so if you're looking for that that's not this video but I hope I help some people clean some fish and let's get into it okay first off I want to point this out this I cut this open last night when I got home, well, at 4 o'clock this morning when I got home, um, and I stick them in a cooler with ice and water to let them bleed out. I got two of them. Um, by doing that, you end up with a, a much whiter, cleaner piece of meat, and you don't get blood everywhere, obviously. If, you clean a fresh, if you've cleaned a fresh fish before, you know what I'm talking about. So, we'll get right into it. So you, you start right behind the gills here. There's this hard bone right here, and you can find it pretty easily. I mean, if you follow the scales up, it changes right there, and it runs all the way up behind their head. I like to go at a really good angle right here against the scales. And you see how I came way up behind the head right here? So now I'm not missing any meat here. Um big thing I want to state, make sure you have a very sharp knife. It makes life cleaning fish a thousand times better. This is a plain Jane like Rapala knife, but a lot of guys swear by this knife. So right there what I'm doing is cutting in and down and back to the backbone. Right up into the backbone there. You want the fish to be flat. And what you're going to do is you're going to run along the top of the spine here. And it's hard to explain while doing it, but what you're doing is you're actually feeling for these bones inside the fish. And with a good knife, you'll feel it resonate right up to your fingers. This is how I hold my knife so I can always feel where my, the tip of my knife is. And then you just go back in a couple times staying close to the spine and if you can hear that those are the ribs so I go down to the ribs and what you're looking for is about I would I think it's about an inch in front of the the uh, what is that called the bottom fin we'll just say that so like here is where the rib cage would usually end on most walleye so the easiest way to do it is you feel for the end of it. What I like to do is I'll cut into, the, on walleye, I cut into this fin about that much. So I can really get my knife all the way across. And then right there, poke through. And make sure your knife is tilted towards the, the back backbone. Move it around a little bit. And now you should be able to take it and follow that backbone. Right to the back. What I do is I leave that attached right there. So this is what you'll have what it'll look like once you get down to that point. This is a lot easier if you just use news newspaper too instead of a cleaning board like I am on an un uneven surface. <laughs> Uh, okay, so now I'm going to take the whole fish o over, flip to this side. I always wipe the slime off or any slime or slipperiness off to make it safer to hold on to. I always recommend doing the same. Okay, so same thing on this side. It's just the reverse. So now you fish the fish will face away from you. Before when you started the fish was facing you guys, now it's facing me. Um, or it's, it's always, the back is always facing you, the, the dorsals. 
So, same thing. Hold the fish really good with one hand. Try to slide in right behind those scales with the other. Same thing. Turn the knife down. Find the backbone and start working your way along the top of it. Don't cut in very far the first time you cut in here. As you want to just get this notch started. And when once you're started, you'll have this little thumb holder too. I go backwards here. A lot of guys will just they'll just continue working their way down. I go backwards so I can get right up along the the rib cage again. Make sure this is cut down so you have this tip free, this little corner here. So back to the rib cage. Down off the back of the ribs. And that one you cut all the way out. So see it's been a little while since I cleaned one. I missed a little bit of meat down there but so now you go back up and this one's full of eggs so sometimes you cut into those and make a mess. So now the trick is is down inside I'm hoping you can see this so this is the rib cage right here I follow it up. I know a lot of guys that just cut right through the whole rib cage, especially with an electric knife or something. This is just the easiest way I've done it. I just catch those pin bones everybody talks about. Very carefully working my way along the ribs. And you can actually kind of like pull it back. See, and I got these bones right here that I cut through. All you gotta do is if you catch any of those bones, just flame them back. So, this is where those walleye wings are. This is a chunk of meat right here. Like I said, I don't ever cut those out, so just cut down and back. And there's your fillet. So this is where those bones were. I'm just going to take those out right away so I don't forget about them. So that's a chunk of bone right there. So that's one fillet. And you had that other side attached still. So I'm just going to clean my board up real quick here. I always try and keep a clean surface because the, the cleaner it is, the less injury you get from slipping and sliding around. So, notch that back off. Now this fillet is free. Now this one is the one I work from front to back. So, I cut, like I said, through that, that layer of pin bones. And you, you'll have to do this a few times to understand where or what I'm talking about. It's like the first layer of rib bones, and this that's what this is right here, is just cutting along the ribs. But if I cut along them like that, I don't have to go back and zipper my fillets like everybody else does. I do notch them. This is just an old way I learned how to clean fish. Uh, it's worked for me for years. There's the other fillet. See, this one's a female. She's got she's full of eggs. Oh, almost forgot. Been cleaning more panfish lately, so <laughs> haven't haven't had to pull any wings out. Okay, so we're gonna set this right here. Hopefully, you guys can see this. 
a little hard to show on camera but so I will actually either hold them by the mouth or underneath and just kind of pinch their heads you can hold them by the eye socket here just be very careful especially if you have a really sharp knife I start on this side by the bottom of the jaw and just get this little notch going and you'll see it there's this little C right here it's actually like a blueprint once you get used to looking at it and you keep the knife up against their cheekbone which is behind the actual cheek muscle and hopefully I showed you it's just a really nice little soft movement put your finger on there put the knife behind it be very careful here if you're not if you're not really comfortable with knives I want you to not do this <laughs> but uh this is one of those things that once I learned how to do it it was an awesome thing it's really good meat and then uh, like if you go somewhere and you get a bunch of walleye you know you get 10 12 cheeks together or you get a you know a group of guys up at the hunting cabin or something like that you get a bunch of these together you freeze those up you fill a bag bag full of them and you have a walleye fry or a, a cheek fry so just little snacks they're really good and uh, don't miss those <laughs> um, thing I always keep handy this is ice water with salt so it's very cold water and that's where you want to put your fish right after you're done cleaning them because it firms them right up and I'm having these for dinner so I'm not freezing them or anything like that I always try to keep fresh fish or eat fresh fish I don't need to freeze them if I can catch them so and we'll do the other one this one's a little more difficult because it's flip side so let me see I think yeah I used to do it this way this is a dangerous way to doing it but I flipped the knife around Kind of like a pencil or almost like you're holding your jigging rods and just do it backwards best part about the cheek is once you get really good at this which I it's been a while for me but once you get really good at this you, you get down to the skin right here and then they literally just peel off that flap so okay so that's the whole fish but this this is that chunk I was talking about there's meat here that you can cut this out and then fry this whole whole piece and you just hold on to these like handles and chew the meat off of there but like I said I don't fry my food all that often so. and then to finish up here I'll show you how to do these real quick these whenever I'm skinning fish a lot of people scale their fish I skin them I keep it close to the edge of whatever I'm cleaning so I can get a nice flat angle. So start by biting in until you get down to the skin. And these are nice deliberate strokes you want to get. And you keep your knife angled just enough so that you're going down to the skin there to get the most meat off your fillet. A lot of people you know, it takes practice to get good at staying down there without cutting through the skin or missing a bunch of meat. I've been doing this forever. I still miss meat once in a while. Not a lot, but that's what you want your skin to look like here. And then take the flay. So this one is where I had that bone sticking out, or no, maybe it was that one. Um, 
but right here right along this line you have bones if you clean it this way all the way back to about here that go in pretty far so what I do is I just cut right next to them try and follow the angle of the bone and then same thing on this side throw that piece away and then there's your boneless fillet yep 100% boneless so that's ready to go on a grill or baking sheet whatever you want to do with it and fry it if you want so I'm gonna do that one after I shut this off but uh, yeah. And I have another one to clean still, but I hope I helped you guys uh, clean some fish here. Um, like I said, I have other videos on how to do stuff like this. I think I have a video actually, yeah, I do. I have one on cleaning pan fish. It's very similar. Um, the only thing you don't do is take the cheek, cheeks out, and it's not as beefy as a fish, so it's a little, little different cleaning and tediousness wise. Um, I have a video on how to keep your knife sharp. Um, this is called a piece of sharpening steel. I go into that in detail in my other videos, so uh, if you need any, any further information on those, uh, go ahead and look at those videos. Otherwise, stay tuned, and I hope we're on nice shortly. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for the next episode of How to Do Stuff, because I'm going to try and, like I said, do a bunch of these videos and try and help you guys get more stuff done and be more productive as outdoorsmen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.